So this one says question 5.3.1, write down the value of D such that this thing is defined. Okay, normally it's undefined, but this one was, um, this one decided to be a little different. If we look at a normal cars graph, goes like this and like this. It normally starts at one and it goes down to minus one. So what are the Y values or the D values? They can be anything between minus one and positive one. Then it will be defined. If it goes, if you say that D is equal to two, then two would be over here. And then it is undefined. It does not exist there. So where is it defined? It is defined whenever Y is between minus one and one. So you can write this answer like this. Or if you prefer interval notation, you can go like this. Like that. Okay, that's just an easy little two mark question over there. Actually, let's leave that there for some of you who are writing that down. Right, it says 5.3.2, determine the general solution for theta. Okay, so let's go write this down. Whenever you see a fraction, what should you think of? You should always think of an LCD every time, okay? So if you see a fraction, before you think of doing anything else, just think about LCD. So here we go, we see a fraction. What do we think? LCD. It works 99% of the time. Honestly, it does. So what is the LCD? Well, the LCD is going to be 6 cos theta. So I'm going to go get my LCD to 6 cos theta. So that's going to end up giving me 6 cos theta multiplied by cos theta for this part equals to 6 plus um, 5 cos theta. All right, just make sure you understand what I've done there. Okay, and then of course, this the cos theta multiplied by cos theta is just going to be cos squared theta. Then take everything over. And there we have ourselves a trinomial. Now we can solve this trinomial by picturing it as a normal trinomial. Yep. So we can just use the quadratic formula, for example. Right. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're just going to go use the quadratic formula. Um, you know, the one we've been using since the 1950s. This one. There we go. And I'm not going to go show you how I plug in all the numbers and stuff like that. You guys are fine with that. But what we're going to go get is, or you're going to go plug that all into your calculator. And you're going to get an answer of cos theta equals, now let me just check what the answers actually are, 3 over 2, or cos theta is negative 2 thirds. Now, these two equations are going to become brand new questions. So you can almost, um, you're going to go restart and you're going to go use the general solution on both of those. Okay. So maybe at the top here, let me just move this out the way. So at the top, um, let's do cos theta equals three over two. And then down here, we can do cos theta equals negative two thirds. So now we're going to go do the general solution, you know, where you get the reference angle and all of that stuff. If you do it for this one, you're going to get an error on your calculator. That's perfectly normal. So this one has a no solution. Now we need to have a chat, guys. About 85, probably 90% of the schools in South Africa use the method I'm about to show you for this one. But there are some schools, like 10% of the schools, that use a different method to the one I'm about to do. Most of you in South Africa, most of the schools, when you get the reference angle, we do not put the negative on the calculator. Okay? Some of you do forget that sometimes. We don't put the negative on the calculator. 
you're just going to type in shift cos 2 over 3. Shift cos 2 over 3. And that's going to give us 48.19 degrees. Right? That is our reference angle. So then some of you might be thinking, well, Kevin, what's the point of the negative then? That's a good question. The negative tells us which quadrant we are going to be working in, whether we are going to be working in um, quadrant one, three, four, seven, eight. I'm just joking. There's only four quadrants, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. The negative tells us that we are working in the quadrants where cos is negative. So cos is negative in quadrant two and quadrant three. So I'm going to go do the answer now for quadrant two. And then again for quadrant number three. Right. So for quadrant two, I can say theta is equal to 180 minus. Because in quadrant two, we always say 180 minus. What do we minus? The reference angle. Then you say plus K times 360. K is an element of Z. If your teacher uses N instead of K, that's absolutely fine. Some schools do use N instead. Then I'm just going to say 180 minus 48.19. And that gives us 131.81 plus K times 360. K is an element of Z. Then I'm going to do quadrant number three. In quadrant number three, we say three, I mean, we say 180 plus. That's how quadrant three works. We say 180 plus. What do we plus? The reference angle plus K360. K is an element of Z. If you then had to go solve that, you are going to get theta is equal to 228.19 plus K360. K is an element of said. And so those are the two answers that we got over there.